Morning, Jezza. Ah. Top of the morning here, Jim. Oh, what? You're reading one of my books. Aye. I thought you'd be pleased. Oh, I am, I am. It's the one you pointed me out. Yes, good. But you're also eating. Your point being? I'd prefer it if the pages weren't covered in greasy finger marks. Oh, no probs. I'm not the fastest reader. I probably won't even need to turn the page. That's all right, then. But of a day, I'll use a knife. A clean one. That's very considerate of you. Yeah, there's some mere porridge left if you fancy it, or you're welcome to the rest of the black pudding. It's in the fridge. Again, most kind. But I had my breakfast earlier, thank you. Suit yourself. Is this right? The Romans gave us central heating. Yes, that's a well-established fact. And concrete. Yes. And they had asparagus. They had all sorts of things. It says here they used to store it up in the Alps for feast days. They were a remarkable people. And all from such modest beginnings in Rome. <laughs> Let's hope for Ambridge yet, then, eh? I think we have some way to go. Anyway, I should be getting along. Places to go, people to see. <gasps> and me. <sighs> I should be up at the pegs. Oh, dear. <laughs> Which only goes to show, I suppose, the pen really is mightier than the sword. Can I wash my pots later? Jazza. I promise, just the once. Jazza. Tom will go ape if I'm not there. Oh, all right then. Just this once. You're a gentleman. In fact, as I'm the cause of your being late, albeit indirectly, I'll do them. Oh, really? Yes. I can't go out and leave the kitchen like this. But just this once, mind. Of course. And you can jolly well wash up tonight for both of us. How long ago did we last clear out these troughs? Too long. You're right. We should really teach the pigs to use a toothbrush. <laughs> I think them chewing on stones is less work for us in the long run, Jazza. <laughs> the Romans had toothbrushes. Did they? Oh, well, sticks they could chew on. Amazing. <laughs> With all these aqueducts bringing water into Rome, you wouldn't want to be cleaning stones out of your eye then, would you? <sighs> I don't want to be clearing stones out of anywhere. I ought to be banging off some more emails about finding somewhere to make my ready meals. Oh, Tom, no again. I don't think you understand the urgency, Jazza. I understand perfectly. It's just I've been hearing nothing else for the past... Well, well, it feels like forever. I've got an order to fulfil in three weeks' time. This is what pays your wages, you know. Ah, yeah, I know. Did I mention that four in every ten Romans was a slave? Uh. I've been back to all the companies I've already tried. Still no joy. What, near room? No. no. One or two have got a gap in production, but it's the clean down, because the meals are organic. Either too time-consuming for them, or adds too much to the cost, for them and for me. That's your answer. What? Stop calling them organic. It means they cost less, and maybe even people like me might be able to afford the odd spicy meatball. You know something, Jazza? Living with Jim has already sharpened you up. Have you got time for coffee? Um, no, I better get going. Thanks, Vicky. Tom's coming home for a lunch and I said I'd get the grass cut. Oh, aren't you good? <laughs> Can't imagine doing anything that energetic these days. No, oh, well, you've got a good excuse. Anyway, the nursery's looking great. The Moses basket's really pretty. Yeah, isn't it lovely? Tom and I thought we'd wait till the baby's here and then get her something, if that's OK with you. Oh, of course, whatever you prefer. But if you want me to come shopping with you in the meantime, and if we see anything you especially like, we can do it that way. Oh, that's really kind, Brenda. Well, I could do with some help to choose a car seat for the baby. Oh, yeah? Yeah, a travel system, I think they call it nowadays. I've been looking at some in the brochures. OK, then. Do you know where to go? Oh, yeah, probably Felpersham's best. Right, well, we'll sort a day to go then, shall we? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi, Dad. Oh, hello, oh. love. Oh. Hey, look who I found you lurking in the yard. I resent that. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Vicky. Brenda. Hello, hi. Jim. Uh, you have a seat, Jim. Oh, have mine. Oh. I was just going, honestly. Thank you. Uh, give me a ring, Vicky. We'll sort a day out. Oh, thanks, love. I will. <clears throat> bye, then. Yeah, bye. Bye. Right, um, <clears throat> what can I do for you, Jim? About the burial ground, is it? Uh, no, though that could be part of it. 
Um, how would you like to feature in Borsuch Life? Oh. Don't be daft. Me? How come? I'm thinking of writing a series of articles on interesting local craftsmen, small producers and so on. Yeah. And you fit the bill on both counts. Oh, Mike. <laughs> nah, I mean, who's going to be interested in me? Lots of people. You've a very interesting story to tell. More than one, in fact. Oh, Jim's right, love. I mean, you've got all these years of experience in dairying and forestry. Oh, and nothing special. But it is. You're too modest. Yes, you are. And it'd be a fantastic advert for the Mill Crown. I mean, it'd pull in some more customers. A good advert for your tree work, too. <sighs> oh, I don't know. And the green burial site. And for being a tree warden. <sighs> Truly, Mike, I think people would be fascinated. Oh, go on, love. I mean, you've got a lot to shout about. You really have. Uh, have they asked you to write them, the, these articles? Uh, well, no. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'm doing it speculatively. You're the first person I've approached. Oh, I see. I prefer to keep it secret at this stage. The editor may not want them. Oh, Ooh, he will when he reads all about the skills Mike's got. Well, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah. That's why I came to you first. Oh, um, shall I? Shall I do it? How many more times? Yeah. <laughs> No, nope. all right then. Oh, yeah. Go on. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> Have you got time now? Are you serious? I know it's a bit radical. No, it's more than that. It's a complete change of direction. Only for the ready meals. And if it gets them made... Yeah, but surely if they're not organic, what you save on the production costs is going to come off the selling price. So the margin's going to be the same in the end. Well... Not to mention how your mum and dad would take it. We thought about how that conversation's going to go. I was trying not to. <laughs> Tom, they'd be devastated. And the whole point of these meals is to showcase your pork. But you're throwing away what that's all about. What's got into you? Desperation? I know, but desperate enough to chuck away your organic status. Come on. All right, all right. The mad idea. Oh, thank you. Some sense at last. I should have realised living with Jim may have had some influence, but he did tell me some quite interesting things about the Romans. So you thought you'd take on his business ideas too? <laughs> yeah, OK, <laughs> it was daft. I should have realised that even exposure to Jim wasn't going to turn Jazza into Warren Buffett overnight. Oh, that is a really scary thought. Hmm. Sound like it's excellent, Mike. Better than I dared hope. You're a natural. Oh, I don't know about that. This article's going to write itself. Can I come in? Vicky, of course. <laughs> We've just finished. Oh, good. I can start getting the lunch. I'm starving. I'm sorry, I should have thought. Oh, me too. Sorry, love. No, no, you're all right. I lay down on the bed for ten minutes and fell fast asleep. I'll get out of your way. Uh, and uh, don't forget, not a word to anyone. Oh, no, 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 don't you worry. <laughs> Did you get what you wanted? Very much so. Oh. Your husband's a man of many talents. Oh, I knew that already. <laughs> well, I must be going. Oh, by the way, with regard to your lovely daughter, for what it's worth, I think you're doing the right thing. Oh, um, thank you. You'll be wonderful parents. And I'm sure the village will give you every support. I know I will. Well, thanks, Jim. Thanks very much. Good Lord, what are you watching? It sounds like the end of the world. Sorry, was it disturbing you? No, no. After years of trying to work in universities with students shrieking beneath my windows, nothing distracts me when I have a piece of work in hand. What were you doing, then? Locked away all afternoon? Oh, only something speculative. It may never go anywhere. I was hoping for a screen break, but uh, what is this? Sit down and take a look. Hey, no, no trainers on your couch. No, oh, indeed. I was just admiring your socks. Oh, Gail. Aye, my nana sent me them down for Burns night. 
So what's the film? Braveheart? No. It's a box set alone da for me. Oh, oh yes. Right up ah. your street. It's set in Roman times. Excellent. You should be able to pick it up. You know the story. I'm all agog. Oh, oh, heavens. <laughs> Goodness. Well, <laughs> if it's the story I think it is, this wasn't in the original. Artistic license. Oh, he has just fought a lion. I suppose he deserves a lie down. You don't get much rest with her. <laughs> no. He doesn't seem that bothered about attending to his wounds, either. He could do with a herbal poultice on that shoulder. Beer? Thank you. I thought we could send it for a pizza the night. Ah. Can't get much more Roman than that, eh? Uh, don't let a Neapolitan hear you say that. Shh. Somebody behind John Cotton. It's got to be our old man. Yeah, oh, look. Oh. What did I tell you? <laughs> this is going to be good. Oh. If that's his personal sword, it's quite the wrong shape for a piece of Thracian workmanship. OK, a word. What have you stopped it for? Jim, I've had a hard day, you've had a hard day. This is downtime, right? So no history lesson. Ah. I know it'll be hard for you and you can't help it, but I've done for the day with the fascinating facts. Oh, no, fair enough. I take your point. I shall try and watch as objectively as I can. OK, you're no offended. I just had to clear that up. I'm not offended at all. You're right. You deserve a rest. Aye, well, thanks. Hey, shall we go mad and order some garlic bread with our pizza? Oh, I can't wait for next week. So have me cleaning money in my hand again. Yeah, I know. Is there any more soup? No, sorry, Ed. I, I thought there was plenty left for two, but it looked a bit mean once I poured it out. Can I have a bit more cheese? Yeah, go on. No, I'll only have a little bit. I need the rest for a cheese potato <laughs> pie one night. So, are you all right? You had enough? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I had some biscuits at Brookfield and a banana. Um. I asked Ruth. She's always telling me to help myself to stay. I don't want everyone knowing how things are. I know. Of course, the trouble is this week's Mum's birthday. What are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. We can't afford more than a fiver. Hmm. And that'll have to be from all of us. I can't get her anything separate from George and Kira like we did last year. <laughs> no, no way. Georgie can make her a card. He'll like that. And so will she. Yeah. Well, I'd better get on. OK. I was hoping Mum would invite us round for a birthday or Dad might say something about taking us to the bull or somewhere, but looks like they're just going out on their own. It's the two of them. Porridge, chickpeas, butter beans... What are you looking oh. for? Anything. Anything. Can I have the end of these raisins? No, they're oh. Kira's. If I can't buy them sweets... OK, OK. If you look in the other cupboard, there's half a packet of those biscuits from last week. The ones that Georgia didn't like. Well, I didn't like them much myself. Well, I'm sorry, that's all there is. Well, I suppose I'd better finish them up then. Does the guinea pig want some? No, I tried them on him already. Oh, things will get better, um... Will they? How? We'll think of something. I'll think of something. Don't know what. Unless... Could you talk to Oliver? No, no, I'm oh, not doing that. I don't see how else He's we're going to... done me enough favours. I've got to go. OK. See you later. Bye. Ah, Ed, the very man. David, have you got ten minutes? Well, um, I'd be really grateful. Ruth's gone to Crowther's with one of the Herefords and there's a gate needs rehanging. Yeah, yeah, go on then. Ten minutes can't make much difference, can it? How's your Welsh, Kenton? Uh, Yachida? 
<laughs> I've got this text from Reese. His auntie and uncle's party was gwitch, apparently. Um, no, can't help you, I'm afraid. Uh, though I suppose the smiley face is a bit of a clue. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. true. Mm, glad he's having a good time. Well, it's certainly quiet without him. Yeah. Too quiet for you? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. What? Well, it's just things getting back to normal, I suppose. And accepting that... What, are you missing being in charge? Well, I knew that it was only while you were away. I enjoyed it while it lasted, but... Hey, it's Mum's pub. I'm perfectly happy to hand it back to her. So what is it, then? Go on. Oh, I, I wish I knew. I suppose it's a bit of... Well, mm. if not that, then what? You know, where am I going? What am I doing with my life? Oh, hey, Fallon, this is big stuff. Well, perhaps it's about time. <sighs> I thought I was fed up, but you have got it bad. Are you feeling like this too? Well, a bit, yeah. I'm certainly finding it hard to get my mojo back at Jack's. You know. It just feels so weird. You know, me and Reese did all this stuff together and had such a laugh doing it, and now... Now what? Mm. Good afternoon. Linda! Oh, Marvellous. I can kill two birds at one bar. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. We haven't long had the carpet cleaned. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, look, can I get you a drink? Mm. Uh, no time, I'm afraid. I have a lot of people to see. Oh. Now, Fallon, you yeah. are, I hope, coming to audition on Thursday? Um, yeah, I suppose so. Well, there's no suppose about it. I'm relying on you, an actress who can sing. There's a lot of music in Much Ado, you know. Yeah, I watched the DVD. You've done some research. Excellent. Well, I haven't got anything else on at the weekend. Well, I'm most impressed anyway. Now, Kenton, yes. Hmm? Uh, well, there are lots of lovely parts for you. Yeah, Ooh. I'm sure. Uh, Claudio, uh -huh. Don Pedro. No, 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 the thing is, Linda, um, a Christmas show, I mean, it's, well, it's my busiest time of year. Well, it's a busy time for everyone. And if you want yeah. something done... No, no, yeah, but in the bar trade, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, you'll, you'll have to count me out, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, I was just uh, telling Fallon we're mm. going to be pulling out all the stops at Jack's this year, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. got yeah. Uh, lots, and, lots of ideas mm. planned. Yeah. Well, seriously, every time you see Jazza these days, he comes out with some bizarre fact about gladiators or something. <laughs> really? Don't know if Jim's brainwashed him or what, but he seems really into all this Greek and Roman stuff. Ah. Uh. And if there's any brainwashing going on, it seems to be working both ways. According to Alistair, Jim's a wreck today. All right, how come? Late night and too many lagers. <laughs> now that sounds more like Jazza. OK, I reckon we can lift it on now. Right, you are. OK, you ready? Yep. Oh. Okay. Left today. How's that? And down. Uh. Uh. Right, let's give that a try. Sweet. Hey, that's great. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, Ed. I'd have been really stuck without you. That's OK. Well, I hope I haven't held you up too much. No, no, it's just, just a couple of electric fences to move and a cow with white line trouble to have a look at before milking. Uh -huh. Some work in the office, if I can face it. Mm. Got to be in the right mood for that. <laughs> too right. Spent half the morning banging my head against the RPA. Ooh, any joy? What do you think? <laughs> They're looking into it. They're going to call back in 2015. Oh, <laughs> but um, things are OK, are they? Though, generally. Well, you're in dairy. <laughs> yeah, silly question. Selling direct to Mike's supposed to make things easier for me, but we've already had to drop our prices to keep the customers, so... Yeah, you're as stuck as the rest of us. <sighs> yeah, something like that. <sighs> I don't think it's ever been tougher than this year. Hmm. Although, I can remember Dad saying that, of course. <laughs> and Grandad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine too. <sighs> but this year's been so expensive. It's only going to get worse, isn't no, it? No, no. Feed prices this winter. It's the hay's rubbish. Yeah. Well, we had to buy in, of course, so the quality's far better than ours would have been. In that way, the fire did us a favour. <laughs> yeah, well... Look, Ed, if it's really getting you down, you know you can talk to me any time. You know, as a friend. <laughs> Don't go saying that. You'll have me and every other dairy farmer in Borsetshire onto you. <laughs> it's the same for all of us. Well, yeah, but you don't have to be on your own with this. You know? it, it's nothing. It's, um, it, it's just the time of year. You know, days getting shorter, 
cows about to come in when they've hardly had any chance to get some sun on their backs. Yeah, it's, I know. I know. it's what Grandad used to say whenever there was some family occasion and we opened a bottle and had a toast. And may the weather be kinder to farmers. <laughs> and the rest... Well, you can leave the Michaelmas daisies and the Bartlier. There could still be a last few butterflies around. Leave them, huh? Oh, good. But you should be getting up these leaves as they fall. Don't let them lie on the beds. Well, I thought they'd make a nice mulch. Not till you've mulched them first. Oh, Kenton. Hmm. And uh, those geraniums, you can get those out. OK. And, what, get some more next year? No. No, you pot them up, put them in the greenhouse. We haven't got a greenhouse. Oh, well, ask your mother. Or any warm windowsill will do. And then you can put some bulbs in their place. You're already a bit late with daffodils, but... The village pub is crucial if Ambridge is going to keep up the standards, Kenton. Mm. We, we can't let our gardens descend into Britain in gloom over the winter, can we? <laughs> <laughs> no, Linda. Quite. The parish council, I'm glad to say, have accepted my suggestion for a clock commemorating our achievement. Did you tell you? Uh, no, no. Why? What, do you want to put it up here? Oh, no, no, no. I think the village hall would be the rightful place, but thank you for the offer. Uh, well, I wasn't exactly... So good it. to know I can count on the bull's wholehearted support. Right. Off to the stables for my quest for a cast. The stables? Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Going to the shop for Frida. Mum's in the bar. Do you want anything? Oh, no thanks, Fallon. Right. Well, nothing the shop sells, anyway. Caught you. Oh, Fallon. That's a big bar, um, too. It's all right, I won't tell. When they make out chocolate's a girl's thing. I just needed a bit of energy, that's all. Yeah, yeah, you'll need it if Linda catches you. She's going round twisting people's arms for her auditions. Oh, that's all I need. I think you're all right, actually. She's gone the other way. Thanks for the warning, anyway. Yeah. Keep an eye out for her. Hey, you ought to do it. <laughs> There's quite a lot of singing in it. Well, there was on the DVD, and you, you've got a great voice. <laughs> Not that I use it much these days. Except for telling George to turn the telly down or getting the cows in. What, not even singing in the shower? Well, I can't believe we were in a band. Yeah, we were good. It seems like it never happened. Young, free, single... Oh, yeah, you don't want to get hung up on that bit. Huh? But being single's not everything it's cracked up to be. You can't have too much of a good thing. Mm, have too little as well. Yes? What? Are you... Everything's all right, isn't it, with you and Emma? Yeah, yeah, no, of course. That me and Emma are fine. Oh, good. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I love her and the kids. I, I love us being a family. Good. So what, then? Oh, it's just... Mm, it, it is tough working it all out, that's all. What do you mean? Well, right now, it's... Look, don't say this to anyone, will you? No, of course not. We're mates. You shouldn't have to ask. No, sorry. Um, so? Well, right now the the business isn't paying its way. I've had to cut what I'm paying myself and things are pretty tight. Oh, Ed. I'm having to cut back all round. I hate it. I, I hate feeling that I'm not providing for them. I feel like I'm letting them down. But it's not your fault. You couldn't work any harder. It's how things are. Well, if working harder would make any difference, I'd do it. But there's, there's nothing else I can do. I've, I've cut every expense I can think of. And then Will... Will what? Well, he just flashes his money around all the time, doesn't he? Well, I don't know. I know he brought George into the pub for his tea the other week. Yeah, and last week he presents him with a guinea pig. All in a flash cage and everything. Oh, great. Yeah, well, George thinks so, obviously. So, can't say anything. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry for dumping it on you. Oh, don't be daft. I just can't see a way out. Well, I knew about the straight roads, of course, but concrete. All right. That's another thing you've got to thank the Romans for. Amazing. And I thought they were just a bunch of guys in skirts. 
What's wrong with that? Evening, Daryl. Oh, uh, evening, Lillian. Hiya. Hello, Jazza. Daryl, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, Ilona said I'd find you here. You've been round home? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been meaning to call round since last week. Can I have a word? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I have my seat. I'm waiting to see Eddie. Thanks. No problem. Now, don't worry, Daryl. This won't take long. I'll see if that coffee's brewed yet. Oh, thanks, darling. Oh, that was a delicious meal, Shula. Thank you. It's nice to see you, Jim. And we thought you might need a night off from Jazza by now. To be fair, I don't see that much of him. He's usually asleep when I'm awake. And he's out most evenings. Oh, we haven't quite got there with Daniel yet, but once he's passed his driving test, I expect that'll change. Jazza's got the most incredible stamina. He came in last night about two. Oh, it didn't wake you up. Uh, well, not intentionally. There was a slight altercation with the umbrella stand. Oh, Jim. Anyway, in at two, and he was still up for the milk round at five. When I asked him about it today, he said it was just a typical Saturday night. <laughs> but it was Monday. Quite. <laughs> Oh, we can't understand how you're putting up with him. It was good of you to get Auntie Chris off the hook, but from what I've heard, Jazz is barely house-trained. Oh, he's not all bad. Well, Brenda said when he stayed with them, it was like having a feral cat in the house. That was a while ago. He's improved since then. <laughs> and I think Harry's knocked a few rough edges off him. And if I can round off a few more... Here we are. Oh, put it there, love. Right. Had one of us better go and check on Daniel. He can't still be doing that essay. No, I'll go in a minute. He ought to be winding down now. And it'd be nice if Jim saw a bit of him. There you are, Dad. Thank you. Shula. Thanks. You see, this is the sort of parenting Jazz has never had. Uh, probably because he's never spent his evenings doing history essays. <laughs> Cause and effect, Alistair. No one's ever given him any guidance or laid down any sort of rules, domestic or otherwise. No, true. He didn't start out with Daniel's advantages, and he's never had the opportunity for any sort of self-improvement. Well, hang on, Jim. Are you saying you're going to give him that opportunity? Where I can, yes. <laughs> the noble savage, eh, Dad? <laughs> well, I don't intend to be quite that clinical about it. Though, I must say, I'm finding it fascinating. But I'm not expecting miracles. Just as well. So you're going to let him stay? Well, why not? I rather enjoy his company. Which is more than I can say for some people in this village. How do you mean, Matt's instructions? When he told you to move from the Walters to the Borchester Road job, what exactly did he say? Well, well it's hard to remember now. He, he just told me I wasn't needed there anymore and, and somebody else would be taking over. Yeah, that, that was it. But you knew you were leaving the Walters with work unfinished. Well, yeah, but I, I pointed out everything that still needed doing. Like the floorboards? The floorboards, yeah, and, and a few other bits. Matt, Matt said it would all be dealt with. Did he? Yeah. Why, look, has there been a problem? Yeah, there has actually quite a serious one. Oh, no. You haven't heard, Dan, about Joyce's accident? <sighs> Come on, Alistair, what do you think? Well, yes. Have you ever read Bors at your life? Of course. Really? Never have guessed from what you're intending to offer them here. I read Christine's copy last month, though looked at would be a more accurate description. There was scarcely anything in it to read as such. Uh, exactly, that's my point. Your article isn't really their usual style, is it? Oh, I'm well aware of that. That's why I'm doing this. I hardly want to add to the pile of meretricious rubbish they usually publish. Even so, you've got to be aware of your audience. I am. I think I've made it very accessible. Accessible? Ambridge resident Mike Tucker is one man who could truly say Exegi Monumentum Aere. Aere. Aere Perennius. What? Oh, I see. Do you think I should have credited Horace? No! I don't think you should be lapsing into Latin at all. 
What's that going to mean to the readers of Borsiger Life? What it means to anyone with a smidgen of intelligence. I have erected a monument more lasting than bronze. <sighs> Very fitting for Mike, I would have thought, yeah. in connection with his tree work. I I'm sure it is. But you've got to realise the sort of people who are going to be reading this haven't had a classical education. Oh, well, really. Uh, look, here's this month's Borsiger Life. Look. Do I have to? No, 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 look, look. Here's a profile of someone. Bespoke hat. Ah. Society milliner Emily Onslow is living proof that if you want to get uh, no, a hat. No, 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 don't. Get a hat. From her stylish studio in a cosy converted cowshed in the leafy Borsetshire village of Lower oh. Hinton, her creations have graced such occasions as Ladies' Day at Ascot to last year's uh, Royal. Alistair, please, Royal no more. I can't bear it. Parties. You get the idea? I do. Cliché gush and arrant snobbery. Yeah, well, whatever you think, Dad. I'm sorry, but if you want a sail, you're going to have to rejig this. Take out the Latin quotations, you mean? And the long sentences and the long words come to that. Oh, really? Talk about dumbing down. Yeah, well, if you want to get it published... Milton, thou shouldst be living at this You're going to have to adapt to the market. <sighs> and know your reader. Think Sabrina Thwaite. Right, I've dug Daniel out of his pit. Shh, not a word. OK. He'll be down soon. He's finishing off his essay. He mustn't feel obliged, Shula. I'm sure he'd rather spend the rest of his evening tweeting his friends or whatever it is they do than sit and talk to me. No, 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 he wanted to see you, Jim. He just gets so absorbed. <laughs> what were you talking about? Oh, uh, Sabrina Thwaite. Oh, she hasn't messed up the shop till again, has she? She rang up a thousand pounds instead of ten the other day. It's called unforeseen consequences, I think. Except in this case, perhaps they could have been foreseen. No, look, you've got to believe me. I got really fond of Joyce and Arthur. Really? Yeah, if I thought for a minute that Joyce would have hurt herself, well, I'd have never left the place when I did, or, or left it in that state. But your conscience should be quite clear, Daryl. After all, you thought someone else was going to be taking over from you and finishing the work. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's right. So it can't be your fault, can it? <sighs> oh, look, let's leave it. In the end, it wasn't your call. But I still feel bad, Lillian. <sighs> anyway, I'm sorting everything. The work's all in hand, so Arthur's happier. Good. Right, then, we will... Say no more about him. OK. I'll let you get back to your drink. Uh, Lillian. Hmm? I just wanted to say, um, I want you to know how much this work with Amside has meant to me in Ilona. He's got me back on my feet. I'll always be grateful to Amside for giving me that chance. Right. But you do know I'm going to be a bit less available in a couple of weeks because of this church renovation job. I hadn't forgotten. Yeah, I, I was speaking to the boss again the other day. Paul. Yeah. Uh, he um, he asked after you, actually. Did he? Is it, um, <clears throat> is it a big job, this renovation? Well, often you don't know till you start. Depends what you find as you go along with these old buildings. Yeah, 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 I see. But it'll probably be a few months. They might not need me for all that time, of course. No, no. Well, um, if you're speaking to Paul again, give him my best wishes, won't you? Only if you're um, speaking to him. Jazza! Jazza, I'm home! Ah. You're in. Jazza? Oh. oh, I must have dropped off. I was waiting up for you. Are you really? See, you got back okay. That's very sweet of you. Had a good evening? Yes, it was fine, thank you. Doesn't it sound it? What? Oh, it's nothing. You've no a row. Oh, don't worry. It's the same whenever I see my family. No, no, not a row. It's just, well, I've had the equivalent of an essay thrown back at me. What they call payback, I suppose, for all the times I've done that to a student. Mm, did you do that a lot? 
One has to sometimes to get results. I think you're a great teacher. I've learned loads since I've been here. You know, I'm very glad to hear it. I'm pleased you're finding the Greek and Roman world so interesting. Aye, but best of all was that top tip you gave me. Uh, which one was that? About reheating pizza. Pizza? I've always just shoved it in the microwave before, but I won't be doing that again. No, oh, well, always glad to be of use. Right, well, the kitchens are tidy, and I've done the bin, so I'm off to my bed. But this is the time you normally go out. Right, but I was thinking, you know, a lot of the time I've gone out because where I was living wasn't that great, but a decent gaff like this, nah, I'm happy to get my heat done. Well, I'm sure you'll feel the benefit. Oh, aye, and is it no bit time you were toddling off to bed yourself? Oh, no, not for me. I shall be burning the midnight oil doing some rewriting, I fear. Oh, well, don't work too late. And mind and rake the fire and put the guard up, eh? Yes, Jazza. Thank you. I will. Lillian? That you? Of course it's me. Oh, thank God. Where you been, puss? <laughs> well, you know where I've been. I say to supper at Mum's. I sent you a text. Yeah, I know, but I wasn't <laughs> expecting you to be this late. Oh, how sweet of you to be concerned. I was. So much so, I rang Peggy. You did what? Yeah, and you'd already left. You'd been checking up on me? No. I was worried, that's all. Oh, how very kind. Well, if you must know, I popped into the bull for some cigarettes and stayed for a chat. All right, the bull. Mm-hmm. Do you want proof? I mean, I can show you the packet. Oh, don't be daft. Like I say, I, I got a bit worried. Yeah, I dare say you did. Now, if you don't mind, I'm rather tired. I think I'll go to bed. Oh, all right, then. Excuse me. Of course. Night, night, puss. Two paninis, uh, an apple and a banana. OK, Mum, I don't need a menu. <laughs> and the last of the chocolate muffins. You like those? Yeah, thanks. So, not all bad, eh? And at least you haven't got a viva to think about. Ooh, what? Oh, it's a sort of oral exam. Alice has got hers today. Oh, lucky her. I'll see you later. Oh, yes. Bye, love. Have a good day. Yeah, lunch will be good anyway. Oh... Ah, here she is. Morning, Matt. Coffee puss, it's just mine. Yeah, please. There you go. You sleep well? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Good, good. I didn't wake you when I came up. Nope. Good. So, what's on your agenda today? I've, uh, I've got a few jobs to do for Mum this morning, so I won't be in the office, if that's all right. Of course, you don't have to ask my permission. I wasn't. But I'll, uh, I'll be around this afternoon. Oh, good, because I'm out to lunch with old Dorsey. It might be a bit of a long one, you know what he's like. I do. You haven't forgotten, have you, that Daryl's not going to be so available soon. He's got some other work. Yeah. Church renovation, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Do you know any more about it? I'm rather in the dark. It's a church in Fawcett Magna, um, St Matthew's. Yeah, yeah, I know that. They're restoring the Lady Chapel or something. Yeah, and is it a local firm doing the work, do you know? I, um, <clears throat> I don't think I've been told exactly where they're based. All right. Wonder how long they'll want him for. No idea. Wonder how they'll organise it. Send one of their own guys in to supervise or appoint someone like, would you think? I really wouldn't know, but quite honestly, maybe it's a good thing Daryl's got some other work. You reckon? Well, yeah. I mean, given that he was so careless leaving the Walters place in the state he did. Oh, that's true, Puss. Yeah. He slipped out there. That's fantastic. Yeah, of course. No problem. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, excuse me. In here, Brenda. Sorry, what? 
Yeah. Yep, okay. Well, I'll look out for it. But that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Okay, bye. Oh, Brenda. Oh. <laughs> wow, I only came to say hello. <sighs> Guess who that was. <laughs> Um, they haven't drawn the lottery yet, and this is only a wild guess, but it wouldn't be something to do with ready meals, would it? The place that's been freezing them for me has lost an order, so they've got a space. Tom, that is great! <laughs> <laughs> but what about the whole organic, non-organic thing? That's the best bit. It's on their organic day. No. I know. That's incredible. <sighs> oh, well done, you. Mm. Oh, if anyone deserves a bit of luck, it's you. You're my luck. Me? Yeah. Funny how they ring just as you turn up. Oh, sure. Oh, it's great to see you so happy. <sighs> oh. OK, bye. And maybe next time. I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, Phoebes. Oh. Hi, Josh. Are you OK? Yeah, fine. Are you getting the bus? Yeah, looks like it. Come on, then. Let's get the back seats. OK. Right at the back, OK? Get off, Tyler. I'm sitting with Phoebe. Keep going, Josh. Such a muppet. I know. So, what was going on back there? With Caitlin in that lot? Oh, nothing. Yeah, look like it. Okay. So we were supposed to be going to film tonight. We were all talking about it in maths and I thought it was sorted. And then when we came out just now, Caitlin said they decided to go to the early show. And what a shame I wouldn't have time to go home and get back into town. Right. They obviously didn't want me to go at all. What film was it? That new rom-com thing. You know. Oh, I've heard it's rubbish. Yeah, well, they all are, aren't they? They're all the same, really. Yeah. They're right, anyway. I wouldn't have had time to get to Ambridge and all the way back to Borchester. Especially with the hens to do. You're doing them tonight, are you? I said I would. Want any help? Would you? I don't mind. Then yes, please. Thanks, Josh. Put the tomatoes on the windowsill, can you, love? Yeah, OK. Oh, the muffins were still on two for one, so I got some more. Mm, great. Well, that's been the highlight of my day. How about you? I told you this morning what it'd be. Oh, Jamie, is it really that bad? Mum, you know how it is. I don't like being at college. In fact, I hate it. I'm not interested in the work and I'm not any good at it. It hasn't been that long. Maybe it's just taking time for you to get back into it after the summer? No, I don't think so. What about your friends? Are they OK? What friends? Marty's in a year below, so I hardly see him. And that's blatantly ignoring me. Well, that's when she's not wrapped around this other guy. Oh, I'm sorry. Doesn't sound like much fun for you. It isn't. Do you think we should go and see your tutor uh, together and talk about it? There's nothing to talk about. You want me to stay at college? I've said I will. End of. What time are we eating? Whenever you like. Oh, I think I'll go for a run. Oh, all right. Um, that's probably a good idea. And make you feel better. Yeah, sure. This has got to be better than sitting in some smelly cinema. Yeah, stuffing myself with sweets I don't want. Hey, careful, you're dangerous with that thing. I am the Terminator. See me and die, nettles. Idiot. I can't believe you don't like strimming. Woo! I don't like doing it near the electric fence, that's all. It freaks me a bit. I've done so much of it around our place. Mind yourself. Hayley's going to be so impressed. A proper professional job. Yeah, did I mention what I charge? In your dreams, you offered, remember? And you've been having such a good time, I ought to be charging you. <laughs> there. Fantastic. Thanks, Josh. Do you want the rest of your drink? Yeah, why not? 
Thanks. So, how's it been really? Coming back to Borchester Green? It's okay. Sometimes I'm ahead in the work. Sometimes I'm behind. It depends on the subject. I didn't mean the work. Oh. It's not how I expected. I thought I'd fit straight back in with the friends I had before, but... It hasn't worked out like that. It's weird. It was actually easier going to South Africa and making new friends than trying to get back in with the old ones. I guess while I've been away, they've kind of bonded together more, and I'm stuck on the outside. Oh. I thought it might be about the baby. What baby? Vicky's. You have told them at school. Yes, of course. Why? People haven't been funny with you about it. No. I told everyone straight out that the baby had Downs. Laura, in my class, her little brother's got it. Right. I'm not embarrassed about it, Josh. I, I didn't mean you should be. No. Does this other kid... Does he go to school and everything? I'm not sure. He's very musical, though. Oh. I don't know Laura that well. We've never been special friends or anything. Right. Well, maybe you can now. Yeah. Maybe. Thanks, Josh. I've so got to stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, blimey, Puss, has Brenda gone on strike or something? I let her go early. They're having supper with Pat and Tony. Oh, supper, don't they? I've only just finished lunch. It was certainly a long one. Well, we'll still be there if Dorsey had his way. He was all for ordering a third bottle. <laughs> Hope he was playing. I hear his shout, so I had a nice, big steak. Lovely. Great little place he's found tucked away in Beckwell. Mm-hmm. You're not cross with me, are you? Just because I had lunch with an old pal. Of course not. Tell you what, I'll treat you to lunch there sometime. This week? Next? I don't think so, Matt. Why not? I've got things to do. I've got my monthly meeting with Jolene on Friday and James is coming to stay at the end of next week. Oh, yeah. So I'll be far too busy. Oh, well, as long as you're occupied, Puss, we don't want you getting bored, do we? What a beautiful sunset. Yeah, it's always good from up here. Your pigs have got the best view on the entire farm. <laughs> One of the best views. All right, you can go now. You happy with them? Yeah. They seem to be settling in all right. I'm sorry to drag you out here, but I wanted to check. No, no, that's all right. <sighs> it's no hardship when I spend most of my life cooped up in an office. <laughs> I don't know how you stand it, Bren. If I couldn't get outside, I'd go mad. Yeah, well, you're a proper farm boy, aren't you? <laughs> Should we go back? Let's go round this way, round the cops. OK. This is where we used to come every year. Me, John and Helen, collecting holly. Oh, yeah, there's loads. We used to make dens in the middle of it. <laughs> Ouch. Well, there's always a way in. We'd be up here for hours. You do love it, don't you? Yeah. I feel so lucky. I can make a living at what I love doing. And have a real future at Bridge Farm. Yeah. Hmm. I think this is the best view on the farm. You can see right round. Mm. And the land just falls away. The woods at the back. Mm. It's very peaceful. Yeah. I've been thinking, Bren. If we could get planning permission, wouldn't it be a great place for a house? A house? For us? Not too far from the village. Plenty of room for a garden. It'd be perfect. Yeah. I can see it's a perfect place for a house. So who have we got coming, Lindy? I've got a long enough list of people who aren't. Neither Tom nor Brenda. Pressure of work. 
Same with Roy and Haley, ditto Kenton and Jolie. Uh, well, that's understandable. But Neville Booth said he'd be here, and Nathan. Yes, yes, and Susan, and... and Tracy. Kirsty said maybe, and she was going to ask if to car. Oh, that's interesting. Mm, he'd add something to the class. Yeah, degree of muscularity. <laughs> Perhaps the soldiers could stage an impromptu game of cricket when they come back from the war. <laughs> yes, well, let's not get carried away, Robert. Um, was cricket played in Shakespeare's day? Um, 1598, the first recorded mention, I believe. At least according to some sources. Really? Oh, and of course I have high hopes of Fallon. Yeah, she'd be good. Acting and singing. Or Beatrice, maybe. Well, yes, quite possibly. But as ever, it's a strong male lead which is going to be the problem. Oh, Jim. I'll go and have a play with the lights. Hello there, Jim. Good evening. How lovely to see you. Were your other commitments not as pressing as you thought? Uh, No, I haven't come to audition, I'm afraid, but Christine is. Ah. Uh, She would like to read for Ursula, but uh, sent me to say she may be a little late. Oh, that's all right. We'll be here for a couple of hours. Uh, Oh, good. Now, uh, I'm afraid I must also pass on bad news from Jazza. Oh, He's not able to come. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. I had him in mind for Boraccio. Um, Jim, look, are you sure I can't tempt you to maybe Don Pedro? Uh, no, really. Well, the I... Anato then. Oh. I, uh... oh, hello, Fallon. Uh, I'll be off then. Uh, no, 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 Jim, Jim, please, please. As you're here, won't you help me out? Please. Thanks for this, Mike. I'm sorry to interrupt your evening. Oh, that's okay, Cathy. You know, I'll go and have a seat. <sighs> Thanks. <sighs> oh. The thing is, it's about Jamie. I don't know what to do for the best. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear Lady Disdain? Are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die when she has such meat food to feed her as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to Disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat? Sorry! Sorry! Hold up on the motorway. Reese, (laughs) it's no need to apologise. It's good to see you. It certainly is. What are you doing here? Why aren't you in Wales? Linda, text me. Just a reminder, no pressure. (laughs) That's brilliant. So you're going to audition? Yeah. I thought, why not? Well, because you never said, and, and you were on holiday. Uh, I take it I'm no longer required. Just a moment, please, Jim. Uh, Fallon, yeah. could you take this and talk Reese through? The same scene you've just been doing. Yeah, yeah, OK, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, surely I can be released now. Jim, do you have to go? I shouldn't be here at all. But you'd be splendid in much ado. Oh, oh, thank you again. I've told you, I have too many other commitments. <clears throat> You're not still harbouring thoughts of becoming a contributor to Borsetshire life, surely? Uh, possibly. After all I said? Just because you had a bad experience, Linda, it might be an education for me. He's going into college, all right. But it's obvious he's hating every minute. Ah. And I hate seeing him like that. Well, of course you do. I've sneaked to look at his work, and he's doing it, more or less. But not getting very good grades. I see. And from the little I can get out of him, Natalie's ignoring him, and his friend Marty's in the year below. So it's not as if he's got a great crowd of mates to make it better. No. But, I mean, if you're worried, hadn't you better see his tutor or something? I mean, what can I do? Yeah, well, the thing is, Mike... The only time I've seen him enthusiastic about anything in the past month is when he was talking about that chainsaw course. Or or when the two of you have been out in the evenings working. Right. But, well, I don't know. Is it true? I mean, if he left school now, could he really make a career out of tree surgery? Oh, Cathy, I... I, um... Well, I mean, look, all I can say is he... He's got all the right things going for him. Really? Yeah, I mean, well, he's interested and enthusiastic. He asks all the right questions. He he thinks things through. He's, uh, he's definitely got a feeling for trees. Well, all right, but 
Wouldn't he still be better finishing his A2s and getting a degree? Uh, well, I don't know, in our culture or something? Well, I can always do that later, yeah, if he wants to. Uh, and it's not an either-or. If he left school now, he'd have to have proper training as a tree surgeon. Oh. He'd get proper qualifications in that to start with, if that's what's important to you. Yeah, yeah, I see. Right. Not every child's academic, Cathy. But it doesn't mean they can't get on in life, eh? I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear Lady Disdain? Are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die when she has such meat food to feed to her as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat. Oh, Robert. But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would, I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. This is more like it. Thanks for the chat, Mike. It's really helped. Oh, well, I hope so. Uh, if there's anything else I can do, uh, you know where I am. I only want what's best for Jamie. Well, of course you do. Yeah, but... Well, well it's given me a perspective. I, I think he and I have got some talking to do. Are we done, then? Yes, thank you both very much. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks, it was fun. <laughs> well, I thought so. Well, yeah, I'm not sure I got the meaning all the time. Oh, no, me. No. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. There's nothing we couldn't work on. For a first reading. Exactly. Uh, well, anyway, I, I have to make some decisions about the cast as a whole, obviously. Oh, right. yeah, of course. But yeah. Um, I'll be in touch. OK, well, thanks, Linda. Oh. Night, Robert. Night. Yeah, cheers. Good night. <laughs> Well, I know, weren't they good? Yeah, superb. Quite a revelation. So I have a Beatrice and a Benedict, but... Oh, dear. Now, Lindy, it's the same every year. Yes, me with my head in my hands. Look, you've got two jolly good leads there. I know, but the rest of the cast is a shambles. Oh, come on, I can believe Neville Booth is Dogberry. Oh, maybe, just about. But the rest, Richard Swade, nice man, so keen, but you can hardly hear a word he says. And as for Sabrina, playing hero like something out of a... <sighs> a lap dancing club? How would you know? Oh, I read the papers. I'll take your word for it. Christine, of course, we'll find something for her, but no sign of Kirsty, nor Iftikar. Mm, bowl for a duck. <laughs> oh, well, we may as well pack up. Come on... It's the usual post-audition slump. You'll pick up again. No, no, Robert. This is a wake-up call. Is it? Yes. For various reasons, all my regulars, all the people I used to be able to rely on, are deserting me. Um, yeah. Um, and Neil said he wasn't so keen to help out backstage this year if I could find someone else. Well, you didn't tell me that. Uh, I was trying to spare you. you got me going now. <laughs> Look, we're not going to solve anything hanging about in a deserted village hall late at night. No, 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 you're right. Let's go home. Yeah, things might look better after a drink. <laughs> It'll have to be a pretty big one. Are you coming in for a quick drink? Say hello to everyone? Uh, I don't think I will, thanks, Farlin. I don't think it'll home. Right. I mean, I've been on the road for hours. I'm, I'm starving. Oh, sorry, Reese. Yeah, of course. Well, I suppose I'll see you around. Mm -hmm. It was fun tonight, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was a good laugh. Yeah. A quiz tomorrow, is it? Yeah. Oh, should be fun. Yeah. Mm. Uh, look, I mean, I know you're still on holiday, but if you want to pop in... And... Yeah, yeah, I might. I, I mean, yeah. I'll see what... I... <sighs> what am I saying? Of course I'll come. I'll be there. Oh, great. <laughs> I might even give up the pencils if you're lucky. Hey, you're too good to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just... No star. Right. 
one fennel tea. Oh, yeah. Are you sure you don't want anything stronger? No, thank you, Robert. I've had a whisky. I don't blame you. And I've also had an idea. Oh, yes. You've got a Beatrice and Benedict in recent Fallon. Yes. Fine. Keep them. But instead of doing the whole of Much Ado, instead of doing any whole play, what you should do is a sort of Shakespearean selection. A selection? Yeah, a sort of best of compilation. Oh. But, I mean, think about it, Lindy. You can hand pick speeches and give them to selected people. Can't you just hear Joe Grundy doing this scepter dial? Oh, Robert. Or Jim giving us Mark Antony's oration? Or Ina Barbus describing Cleopatra, maybe? Oh, no, <laughs> no long, complex rehearsals. Mm. Not till the end, anyway. I can rehearse people individually. And some wouldn't even need to learn lines. They could read. There you are, then. The only thing is... What? Well... With no through story, I do think the audience's appetite for verse might be a bit limited, mm. especially with, you know, amateurs doing it. And it is supposed to be a family show. Yes, yes, but it needn't be just verse. What do you mean? No. No, we could we could have music, dancing, revels, a real Elizabethan <laughs> Christmas. See, yeah. <laughs> what else do they have? Jugglers, fire eaters. My health and safety, Robert. Yeah, <laughs> not something they had to worry about at the Globe. Didn't it burn down? I tell you what, I'll build you a Globe Theatre. What? In the village hall? Well, we've still got the flats from Dick Whittington. Yes, interior Alderman Fitzwarren. There's plenty of half timbering on those. Oh. A couple of uprights and cross beams for upstage. <laughs> but never mind Neil, we've got Daryl now, a proper craftsman carpenter. Oh, Robert, <laughs> as ever, you... <laughs> You uh, are brilliant. Oh, no, not you really. You are an Elizabethan <laughs> Christmas. What? Well, what better way to mark the end of Jubilee year? Oh, well, I think that's us done, Lillian. But I'll get straight on to the brewery about them Christmas promotions, eh? Yeah, yeah, do. So, shall we declare this meeting closed? Yeah, yeah, sure. thanks, Jadine. You know, you're doing a very good job, all things considered. We're keeping our heads above water, anyhow. Now, have we earned ourselves a drink or what? Uh, no. Huh? No, 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 thanks. I better not. Matt'll wonder what's happened to me. He don't usually keep you on that short leash, does he? <laughs> or you don't let him. No, we're, we're both keeping an eye on each other at the minute. Are you? What for? Oh, this and that. We've had one or two little, um... No, well, you know. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, 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 it's nothing. It's an occupational hazard, isn't it, working with your partner? Oh, tell me about it. It weren't all plain sailing with Sid. That's worth it, though, isn't it? When it's going well. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Ah, oh, I'm glad you're sitting down. You need to be. Sabrina Thwaites just said something interesting. Never. <laughs> hey, get this. She's been drinking at the King's Head in Felpersham. And why is that interesting? Ah, well... They've been doing fashion shows in the evenings. They put a catwalk in their upstairs bar. Yeah? What, what do you think? Not a lot. What do you mean? Well, the ball could do the same. Say, once a month, get the likes of Sabrina and Jennifer in here, do a deal with some local outfitters, you know, the sort of thing. Yeah? Mm, well, it might add to the bar takings midweek. Do you think so, Lillian? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd come to something like that, especially during the winter month. Yeah, there you go, you see. Yeah. Why not give it a go? Yeah, I might do. Yeah, I mean, worth a shot, eh? You know, build on the good work that Fallon did over the summer. Well, it's worth looking into anyway. Bye for now, mm. bye, darling. Lillian. Bye, Kenton. Oh. Mm. Bye, Lillian. Yeah, See ya. you take care. Keep in touch. Yeah, will do. So I'll do a bit of research, shall I? See what I can find out. Yeah, OK. <laughs> oh. but you're daft. You ought to be saving these ideas for Jacks, not handing them to the opposition. You're not the opposition. Well, I ought to be. Yeah, but well, that's not what I want. I don't feel like that. Kenton? No, I, it's just, well, since we were away, this is where I want to be. I, I want to be with you. Oh, darling. No, oh, you know, I, I, I want to spend more time together, you know, not me working crazy hours at Jack's, you working all hours here. Yeah, I know. It's been weird trying to settle back into it. Oh, it's more than weird. It's just pretty horrible as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, same here. I miss you too, I guess. Really? Yeah, of course, really. Okay, well, in that case, 
I've been wondering. I might just have an interesting idea of my own. Can I have some more yeah. pegs, please, Ed? Oh, yeah. Um, are you going to give me some of those pegs for Mummy, Kira? Yeah, are you? <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's a nice lot. Good girl. There you go, Em. Uh, one at a time, please. Oh, right. Oh, Mum was thrilled with her present, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, you'd never have known that frame was from a charity shop, would you? No. Oh. It's as good as new. And she could never have enough photos of George and Kira. Oh, I didn't tell you. I went into town today, to mm. the library. They've got a ghosts and ghoulie story time at half term that I can take Georgia to. <laughs> and that's free. Oh, brilliant. Hmm. And they're making masks and decorations, too. Oh, that'd be nice. And Aidan's mum said she'll have them for the day and take them swimming. Oh, we all love that. Yeah. Says she owes me for when we had Aidan overnight. Oh, when they had to go to that funeral, yeah. Yeah. So, half term shouldn't end up costing us too much. Oh, good. Well, I'll see what time I can swing off and maybe we can all have a day out as well. Oh. Picnic or something if the weather's OK. That'd be great. Oh, I love doing things, all of us together. Well... I quite like doing things, just the two of us, as well. Yeah, me too. Oh, Ed, no. What? Well, Will's not bringing George back for a bit, is he? <laughs> what about Kira? I'll put her down for a sleep. She's only just woken up. Spoil sport. There's always later. Yeah. Well, that doesn't cost us anything, does it? Singing. Oh, uh, well, it's a song from Linda's play. Oh. We were doing it last night. Oh, I see. Have you heard from her yet? Have you got a part? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was about to come and tell you. She she just rang. And? Oh, she wants me to be Beatrice. Oh, Fallon, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, well done, darling. Yeah. Although we're not actually doing the play. Play? Hey? Oh, she's given up on that. So, so what? She wants you to learn all them lines just for the fun of it? Well, no, no. Well, what's going to happen is... I'm not quite clear. You know, Linda, she uh. gets a bit carried away. But if I've got this right, she's doing all odd bits of Shakespeare with dance and music and whatever thrown in. Uh. An Elizabethan Christmas, she's calling it. OK, so where do you come in? Uh, well, she still wants me and Reese. Uh, she wants him to be Benedict. He's the one that gets off with Beatrice in the end, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, she wants us to do one of their scenes. Mm. And I get to do the song as well. With my ladies. Oh, ladies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, except right now, all she's got is Pat Fletcher and Molly Button. Oh. So I might end up doing it as a solo. Whatever. It'll be brilliant, darling. Anyway, she's still firming things up. She had to be quick. She's got to ring that dancing friend of hers. Something about pavans and galliards. Uh, it's not going to ask you, me. It's a bit uh, before my time. <laughs> mm, um, it's great news anyway, darling. Did you want me for something? Um, yeah, actually. Have you got a minute? Sure. Is it about the quiz? No, no. It sounds like you've got that well sorted. It's for a chat with me and Kenton. Oh. Nick will keep an eye on the bar. So, um, upstairs in the flat. Upstairs? Yeah. Sounds serious. <laughs> Gina, I think nearly had a fit. Well, they were on the bread shelf. <laughs> yeah, next to the Eccles oh. cake. <laughs> well, knowing Grandad, it's a wonder they weren't in an Eccles oh. cake. Mum was going ballistic. <laughs> said if Health and Safety found out, I mean, someone's old teeth left lying around in a food shop. It's not great, is it? <sighs> She's had to disinfect the whole unit. It's a good job it was Jane Harvey who found them and not Hilary Noakes or someone. She'd have kicked up her right fuss. <laughs> Grandad's got to get this teeth thing sorted. Mm. Isn't that ulcer of his better yet? Yeah, yeah, but he's got so used to taking his teeth out. He, he says it's comfier. He needs to go to the dentist. Mum, Ed! Hello, darling. School OK? Where are you, George? Look what Dad got me. Well, th that's nice. That's, um, that's to wear for your karate, is it? Yeah, isn't it great, Mum? Yeah. I'll be the only one with a proper suit. I'm sure you will. I'm going to try it on. Uh, not here, Georgie. Not, not outside. You, you, you don't want it to get dirty, do you? I don't care. Yes, you do. You, you go inside and put it on and uh, we'll come in in a minute and see you. 
All right. Okay, Em, okay. The thing is, darling, um, well, it's obvious you've been a bit down lately, is it? Well, I've tried not to let it show. Well, someone hasn't said something, have they? Or one of the customers? No, 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 honestly, no one has said anything. Oh, that's okay then. Well, so what? Well, it's more that we've noticed. And so there's something we'd like to put to you. See what you think. Go on. Well, um, since me and Kenton had our holiday, to be honest, we'd like to spend more time together. Oh. Hmm. oh. So if you want me to do more shifts so you can have a bit more downtime. No, it's not that. Um, oh, we're not explaining this very well. well the thing is, Fallon... Uh, Kenton's I... had this idea that perhaps he might leave Jack's and come and work here full time. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I see. Hmm. But, well, I can see how it'd be great for you two, but that that'd mean there'd be one less job for someone. Does that mean you'll be letting Reese go? Oh, no, no, we definitely want to keep Reese. Oh, well, well, that's all right. <laughs> but, well, what then? Em, like I said, calm A down. A suit. When they've been told they can do it in tracky bottoms and T-shirts. Yeah, I know. And when what George could really do with her are some new trainers or jeans. Yeah. If Will has only talk to me, ask me about these things. Well, hang, hang on. <laughs> Look, I don't want Will knowing that we can't manage. Oh, Ed, wake up. You reckon he doesn't know already? You what? Well, of course he does. Or suspects. How could he? Oh, come on, you know him better than that. So do I. What do you think he's doing this? Yeah, but how could he know? He just does. He's picked something up from George, or, I don't know, he's sensed it. That's all it takes for him, isn't it? Great. <sighs> Great. This is Will, isn't it? Instead of doing the decent thing, coming and talking to me, and then maybe putting up George's money a bit. God knows he can afford it. No, no, he does things Will's way. You're buying him stuff. Stuff that George doesn't want or need. Stuff that actually costs us money. And time and effort, like that flipping guinea pig. Good, Ma. George, George, I, I said not to wear your new kit outside, didn't well, you I? you didn't come in. Look, watch. Yeah. <laughs> Mum, Mum, are you watching? Look at my karate. Yeah. <sighs> Very good, sweetheart. Oh, you're going to be great. Fallon, my darling, of course we don't want you to go. Uh, well, not very far, anyway. Oh. I mean, it's just that we both think that you did a fantastic job managing this place while we were away, and we saw this as a way of you taking more responsibility. Exactly. Hmm. You know, I want to spend more time in Ambridge, and mm -hmm. you could do with a bit more of a challenge, so swapping jobs achieves that. We'll say so, Matt. But I'd move to Jack's. Hmm. Yeah, and of course, when I say... Swap jobs is not quite that simple. Uh, no. Well, I mean, I'd have to square it with Jim and dear old Don Sandland. Yeah. And there'd have to be some sort of interview, I guess. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure that would just be a formality. Right. Mm. But Jim's been praising you to the skies for everything you did here over the summer. Said it showed a very, what was it, um, enterprising spirit and a lively mind. Oh, and if there's one thing that Jim <laughs> likes, it's a lively mind. <laughs> yeah. So I'd be working in Borchester. Well, that's where Jax was last time I looked. I mean, we'd have a proper handover, of course. I wouldn't expect you to know it all straight away. But you'd have Kirsty around even after I'd gone. So what do you think, Fallon? I don't know. <laughs> it's... Uh, I can see it's a great opportunity. Yeah, but can you see yourself doing it? I, I think you're ready. Yeah, but only if it's what you want, sweetheart, eh? <laughs> 